Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're going to talk about the risks and benefits of fire and nuclear energy. We all enjoy the benefits of fire, and we've learned to avoid the, avoid the risks so we can enjoy the benefits of fire. We know less about the benefits of nuclear energy, and we need a realistic knowledge of the risks so we can make good, good, de so we can make good decisions about nuclear energy. We're going to examine each one of these areas in turn. At one time, fire was the source of light for, for human beings at night. Today, we use the light from candles to celebrate birthdays, dinners, and religion. And everyone has good memories of sitting around a bright, warm campfire on a, on a summer evening, singing songs, telling stories, and just enjoying the evening. Fire and electricity keep our houses warm and comfortable in the wintertime. And we cook our food with fire and electricity because cooked food is much easier to digest. It gives us the nourishment and nutrients we need to keep us work working well. Two thirds of all the electricity we use is made by fire. Fire generates most of our electricity. Virtually all of our transportation system is powered by internal combustion engines with fire inside. The examples are ships like this, which carry food and materials all around the world for the benefit of everyone. And buses like this that transport people all around our cities, take them to work, bring them home, take people shopping, whatever. Explosives are, are very useful in the mining and construction industries. And fireworks are used by communities and nations to, for great celebrations. Firearms are used for hunting and for our security services to keep us secure. The Olympic torch here is a, is a symbol of athletes from all around the world collecting every four years to show off what they can do. And for those who like to barbecue outside in the summertime, there are barbecue lighters. But fire kills. In the US, fire kills 2,650 people annually. Seven people die from fire every day in the US, and 35 people are injured. And the direct property damage is $7 billion. The leading cause is cooking, and especially frying. And you can see there's a fire in this frying pan. And one quarters of all the, all the Fires resulting in death were caused by people smoking. This is a dangerous thing to do. And in two thirds of the deaths, smoke alarms were missing or inoperative. And we have industrial, commercial, and forest fires as well. And those hit the news all the time, especially the forest fires in California. We deal with the danger of fires by education. We teach people what a fire, fire drill is and what a fire alarm sounds like. We teach people that fire exits are for emergency use only and that we should not use an elevator because the elevator might stall. And in this building, this is, this is where one of the fire exits, is, exits are and the other end of the building, there's another fire exit over there. We have an annual fire safety month where we teach people to look at their fire extinguishers and to put new batteries in their smoke detectors so that they're always operable. We have firefighters who are trained and we have inspectors who inspect buildings such as this one and in industries to make sure there are no, no fire hazards. And we have fire powered fire engines to take firemen to fight fires and we have Smoke detectors, always check the battery in your smoke detector. And we teach people how to use fire extinguishers. They're very easy. You pull the pin, you lift it up, point it at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and the white powder will come out and extinguish the fire. And we have sprinklers in buildings. They're very safe. This building has sprinklers over here and at the back. At one time, there was a point where, where nobody had been killed in a, in a sprinkler building. I don't know whether that's changed in the last 20 years. But. And when liquids move through hoses, they create static electricity. So all hoses today have built-in static dissipation so that you can't build up a static spark and have a fire when you fill up your, 
tank with gasoline. And some of you may remember when gasoline trucks dragged a chain along the road to dissipate the, the static electricity built up by the tires. But today, tires dissipate static electricity, so that's no longer a problem. We now have corrosion-resistant uh, materials that build containers for flammable materials. We use flame-resistant clothing. And we have building codes and permits. Every new building, industrial or commercial building, is checked with the building codes to make sure that there are no fire safety hazards in there. Fire is a fearsome, fearsome weapon of war. These are all bullets. And at one time, uh, uh, rifles were called firearms because we had to strike a spark to make the gunpowder burn and explode, explode the bullet out of the gun. Today, these are modern bullets. Uh, they have a percussion cap at the end, and when you hit the pin, it generates a fire inside, which causes the explosive to burn and, and expel the bullet. We have artillery shells and aerial bombs and floating mines, as these are all powered by fire. And rockets, this, the, it's powered by fire to propel it, and then the bomb at the end is powered by fire. And this is napalm, this is jelly gasoline, which was used in World War II as a weapon of war. There are incendiary aerial bombs that were dropped on Japan and burned up a lot of their cities. And at one time when <coughs> armies would come through and they'd live off the land, and, and if a population found that an army was coming, they'd burn everything up. So it was a scorched earth policy. So the invading army had nothing to eat and no place to stay. And there are many other ways for fire as a weapon. You can probably think of some. We've learned to use fire because the benefits far outweigh the risk. We've learned to use nuclear energy because the benefits far outweigh the risk. Fire safety came with education. Nuclear safety, education is important, very important. Currently, there's a fog of misinformation. It creates fear. It's an irrational fear. The purpose today is to disperse the fog to examine the benefits and risks and put it into reasonable perspective. An explosion like this from a nuclear energy atomic bomb is the kind of explosion that, that uh, devastated Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Nuclear, nuclear energy as an atomic bomb is a very destructive weapon. We learned about fire safety by burning coal, oil, and natural gas. We made, made mistakes, but we learned a lot from it. We used the knowledge, learning about coal, burning coal, oil, and natural gas to develop nuclear safety. And there's five important points about nuclear, say, nuclear energy that we're going to cover now. Benefits to society. There are lots of benefits of nuclear energy to society. Nuclear energy is the safest way of generating electricity. And nuclear radiation, people fear it, but it's a very useful tool for us. And we're going to talk about nuclear waste management. It's very easily controlled. And we're going to talk about the events at Chernobyl and Fukushima. And this is how the talk will unfold. When a radioactive atom disintegrates or, 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 or fissions or decays or however you want to talk about it, it releases heat and radiation. And we use the radiation in a machine like this to detect medical problems in people. This radiation can detect problems that we can't detect in any other way. So it's a very important method of detecting things that can't be detected anywhere else. Nuclear energy is a treatment for cancer. We focus the radiation on the cancer cells. The radiation kills the cancer cells. And that's how it works. That's very useful. Every smoke detector in everybody's home has a small amount of radioactive material in it. And the radioactive material can ionize the invisible gases that come off of a fire when it first starts. Before you even know there's a fire, ionizes them so they can be detected. So you can get very early warning on when a fire is starting. If you, stood a, if you were a foot away from this, the amount of radiation you'd get is about one thousandth that of the background radiation. 
and we'll talk more about background radiation in a minute or two. This is the ERMAC. It's a Russian icebreaker and it's powered by nuclear energy. Atomic uh, uh, aircraft carriers are powered by nuclear energy and so are atomic submarines and cruisers and more large ships will eventually be powered by nuclear energy. Because ships like this can go without refueling for several years. It's a real advantage. When some radioactive materials uh, uh, disintegrate or decay or fission, they release very intense radiation which is very penetrating. That radiation can be used to replace x-rays in welds so that we can photograph welds and check to make sure there are no inclusions. Every weld is perfect. We use that for pressure vessels to make sure they're safe. We use it for pipelines to make sure the pipelines are safe. Any place there's a place where we must have a weld that's going to perform perfectly, we use a radiograph to check it out. This is a Mars rover, one of the early models with the solar cells to power it. Today, Curiosity, the present one, is powered by a, a nuclear electricity generator. For the same weight, it generates more power and it lasts a lot longer than solar cells do. Some foods are very difficult to sterilize and spices are one of those types of foods. And so radiation is used to sterilize spices and other foods as well. And we're always finding new uses for heat and, and radiation from nuclear energy.